So now we have the necessary framework to go into the results of Retro PGF round number two and understand what happened. First of all, Retro PGF was at the beginning of this year, February 2023. There were 71 selected batch holders. Remember that the batch holders are the people deciding on how to allocate the funds. Out of these 71 batch holders, 69 voted. That means there were only two that didn't participate, which is like really, really good number. These batch holders decided on how to distribute 10 million OP tokens across 195 projects. These are the numbers. Let's go to see the results and the analysis. First of all, all of the projects got some funding. That means like everybody got rewarded in some way. The three categories to which projects could apply were education, infrastructure, and tooling. And the projects that benefited the most were some very well-known names in the crypto industry. For example, Open Zeppelin, Defilama, uh, ETH Global, l 2 bit Gith, Solidity. These projects received very good funding. But now it's time to go into the number one conclusion, I think the most important point of the second round of the Redro PGF, the immense impact it had mostly on small projects. There were many, many messages of gratitude and even surprise from a lot of projects to which the retro PGF number two was game changer. I think that's the key point of funding public goods in the first place, right? Being able to support projects that are adding a lot of value to the ecosystem and that can really, really benefit and become sustainable thanks to this initiative. Now that said, there are many things to improve. First of all, the batch holders said that assessing impact was very difficult for them. There are many reasons. A lot of projects didn't submit all the information regarding to what they do or couldn't provide specific objective metrics of the impact they had. For some, it was complex to understand how literal should they take this idea of impact equals profit. Like, are the batch holders supposed to decide how to allocate fund in a way that matches the impact and the funding that they already received. So impact equals profit. Like that can get really complicated. There's not like a given success metric. There's not like a given criteria. And that also caused a third issue that for many batch holders, their votes were based mostly on vibes and on their personal impressions. It was hard for them to grasp what the collective as a whole observe. Those are things that the collective is already working on so we can keep improving in the next round. Remember, everything is a great experiment. There was one last difficulty that I wanted to address and concerns the tooling for batch holders to vote, especially considering there were 195 projects. If we want to scale this, if we want to have a lot of retro PGF funding happening and being a sustainable and trustworthy source of income for public good builders, we need to make sure this scales better and it's going to be complicated if there are not a given criteria and a given set of tools to make it easier for smart holders. That's what the collective is working on. We will see what will happen in Retro PGF number three, which is coming in a few months, and how things will improve, or at least what measures will be taken considering all this learning. Stay there. See you optimistic. Oh, stay there. See you optimistic. I guess that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say... See you there, stay optimistic.